so this is just another video I'm gonna go over constant some constant constant cumbies material um, just at the beginning of the video something I was thinking about um, I was watching a stream of um, CJ Chanter um, the other night and um, I'm becoming more and more aware of this people on YouTube they're whining about subs and complaining about being shadow banned and all this kind of stuff and uh, they're not happy with the amount of people they've got watching their videos and stuff like this and um, I'm not slagging this guy off I think he does really good streams really good videos CW Chanter but it's like what's happening to people it's like YouTube takes over people's lives and it's like I swear to God they must spend all day worrying about YouTube worrying about their hits worrying about their videos um, he spent like 10 minutes, 10-15 uh, minutes at the beginning of this stream like talking about his subs and and he, how many people he's getting watching and down votes and up votes and you see it more and more and more and um, what's happened to people? Like it's, it, 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 it reminded me, it made me think of there's a Genesis Peorage from Psychic TV after Psychic TV <laughs> He had an absolutely fantastic um, ambient project that he used to do called The Majesty. And there's a line from one of the, he did very long ambient pieces with like poetry over the top. And there's a line from one of the poems, one of the pieces, and he says, um, I have made the mistake of believing that this world is real. And it's like, this is what's going, these people, it's like, they've made the mistake of believing that YouTube is real. Um, th there's another guy I listen to a lot, um, um, Scambate Central, he does, he does streams on Scambating, I mean, great stuff. I, I love listening to it. But he's moaning about his subscribers, he's a... Uh, I've only got, uh, I'm only a small channel, and you look on his channel, he's 50,000 subscribers, <laughs> he's got 50,000 subscribers and he's complaining that he's a small channel, I just, I don't, what's, what, whatever happened to people, and, um, Millennial Woes as well, that guy, um, he's gone now, Millennial Woes, he's been kicked off for what, whatever reason, and he used to do some quite interesting videos, but the more and more you watch that guy, um, he was constantly, he would do a live stream and he'd spend 10 minutes at the beginning of every stream talking about the lighting. Um, and he'd put out like one video every six months and he'd be saying, uh, the reason I haven't done it, the reason I haven't done much content, I'm trying to do a video on this. I'm trying to do a video on this, but I haven't got it right yet. And he was, I think the guy was very, he was, maybe he was quite vain, but look, you, you just do a video. This is, this is where I live, right? I've got nicotine stains on my fingers. Um, my fingernails are filthy. I look like a mess. You just do the video and stick it up. No one cares. Yeah. No one cares. Who cares? It's like Amy Winehouse. I remember somebody was asking uh, Amy Winehouse. She was talking about Madonna. Um, you know, Madonna and her stage show and her videos and all this kind of stuff. And Amy Winehouse said, uh, somebody asked her about her in an interview. And she said, oh, you know what? The thing is with Madonna, why doesn't she just stand in front of a microphone and sing? <laughs> it was like, it's the same shit with this YouTube stuff. Hmm. Anyway, so I'm I'm going to get into chapter fourteen of this book now, um, and it's the incredible heresies of Father Matthew Fox. Now, if anyone's uh, watched this video a few chapters ago, there was a quote from this uh, Matthew Fox. And it was just the most woolly, just ri ridiculous quote, uh, ludicrous New Age bullshit. Um, it was the quote about 
Ah, uh, if you, uh, everyone, everyone should live like this. And if you don't agree, then there's something wrong with you. So I'm, I'm kind of not looking forward and I kind of am looking forward to reading this chapter. Because I'm sure there's going to be some absolute BS quotes in this thing. Anyway, here we go. The Incredible Heresies of Father Matthew Fox from A Planned Deception. And she starts off with a quote. The good news of the gospel is that we are deified. Matthew Fox. OP to Winter Interim Programme School of Pastoral Ministry, St. Francis's Seminary, Milwaukee, September 1980. That's the quote, and she starts. Balancing my cigarette. In the past four years, Viewing extreme heresies has become an unwanted detour from my formerly busy downtown Detroit law practice. It was departure from religious orthodoxy and proposals for the New World Order coming from evangelical and mainline Christian churches that initially drew my attention to what I later learned was the New Age movement. After viewing this glut of aspartate verbiage for this long, one can become fairly insulated against fresh shocks. Even some things that were clear deviations from the word of God look good in contrast to others containing heresies far more blatant. Eventually, I found I had to guard against desensitisation. I was starting to excuse some very serious problems due to personal weariness. The heresies of one man, however, stand out and even dominate a vast field of religious filth. They are such that they literally jump off the printed page screaming for attention. Oh, this is going to be great. I have seen little in even the worst of New Age literature that approaches the deliberate perversions of an imaginative Dominican priest Christened Timothy Fox, he assumed the name Matthew Fox since entering the Dominican priesthood. Ordinarily, one might consider some of his profane statements to be mere babbling. However, in the case of Father Matthew Fox, the conditions are not ordinary. For Matthew Fox wields enormous influence across a vast spectrum of the Catholic, Lutheran, Evangelical, New Age movement, homosexual community, witchcraft, neo-pagan and even reorganised Latter-day Saint spheres. On May the 1st 1982 I spoke to a conference of Catholic conservatives in Columbus, Ohio. Although I was prob probably the only Protestant speaker I was made to feel very welcome. This was the first major address I had delivered on the New Age movement and the timing was only six days after the Christ is now here full page newspaper advertisements of April the 25th 1982. The audience appeared stunned as I deluged them with almost overwhelming evidence against the New Age movement. I read passages to them from New Age books showing how both Christians and Jews were targeted for eventual elimination. I finally read the following passage, passages from Matthew Fox's We, this is it's spelt weird, We, W-H-E-E, We, W-E-E, We, W-E, We, 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 quote, Sorry. Quote. There is an extremely important caveat and danger, italicised, sign that looms on our journey. That is the warning not to look back. 
The reader will recall how, in the introduction, I relayed the story of the age of the bull and the age of the ram as comparable in the depth of change of human consciousness to today's age of Pisces yielding to the age of Aquarius. There was one side to the story I left out until now. If you recall, when Moses came down from his experience with God on the mountaintop, he was so infuriated by what he saw the Israel, Israelites doing that he broke the commandment tablets. What were they doing? They were whoring after the past gods, italicised. They were worshipping the religion of the previous age, the age of the bull. They refused to face the new spiritual consciousness that Moses ushered in, that of the age of the ram. And there's a quote. Oh, so it's continuing. So we, too, on the verge of breaking into a new spiritual age, need to be aware of the gods of the past. They will continue to haunt us and attract us by nostalgia and other temptations. We need to be brave, standing and moving together into a new spiritual age. We should not delude ourselves by underestimating the newness of this age and what new demands are justice and prophetically oriented spirituality will make on our former mystical lives. We need to remember Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who called for today's holiness to include a giving up of our own holiness. Nor should we underestimate the power the former age still possesses with which to seduce us. We have a clear lesson from the Israelites. To look back piningly is to commit idolatry. End quote. I then told my audience, she's continuing, Matthew Fox is a heretic. With shocked murmurs, they sadly agreed. The next day, a sobered priest sadly told me, did you know that this very weekend, while you are here addressing us, Matthew Fox and three nuns are giving an acupressure seminar to the United States Council of Bishops? I have found Matthew Fox's books for sale in most Catholic, most mainline Protestant, including Methodist and Epis Episcopalian stores and even some evangelical bookstores. He also is carried, of course, in most UA, New Age speciality bookstores. One Seattle area evangelical bookstore sells the hidden dangers of the rainbow. Under the counter, in a plain brown paper bag. <laughs> Oh God, that's funny. Stapled shut and enclosed with a critical review from my Christianity Today. Is that for real? They're literally selling this book in a brown paper bag, stapled shut. Enclosed with a critical review from Christianity Today. However, Matthew Fox was accorded gen generous open shelf space over the counter. I discussed the Fox heresies with the manager of that store when I was in there in April 1984. In July, when I returned, I went back only to see that the supply of Fox's books had roughly quadrupled. Order cards in the books confirmed that the stock had been updated since my last visit. 
God, she's like going through this bookstore, like reading their books to find out how many books they're ordering and what they're selling. My God. Meanwhile, Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow continued its lonely under-the-counter vigil. The same store carried several Bantam New Age series books. Alice Walker's pantheistic novel, The Colour Purple, and a disarmament catalogue that gave substantial credit to Lucis Trust World Goodwill. Seattle seems to be a particularly fertile area for the germination of Matthew Fox's colourful heresies. In 1983, he was allowed to desecrate Archbishop Hunthausen's cathedral. As conservative Catholics picketed outside, inside the church, Matthew Fox delivered the keynote address to a gay pride organisation. It was there also that he was co-sponsored by the theology department of the Jesuit University, Seattle University and the New Age Chinook Learning Community. Coinc coincidentally, we both spoke at Seattle University on the same early no November evening in 1983. While he was an official guest of the theology department, I was sponsored by the conservative Catholic Youth League of Greater Seattle. That night, the score was God won, devil nil. We outdrew his attendance by a ratio of 10 to 1, 500 versus 50. I wonder if they were fighting afterwards, like, like football hooligans. Both at the same venue, that must have been a tense night. However, the store was temporarily reversed the next week in Detroit. At that time, Matthew Fox spoke to a large and captive audience of Roman Catholic parish leaders in my home city of Detroit. He was sponsored by the liturgy committee of the Arch diocese of Detroit. This was a repeat of the conference which had the year before been sponsored by the Diocesan Education Department. There Matthew Fox had been given untrammeled access to the moulders and shapers of little Catholic minds. Now in 1983 he was given the same access to those so shaping adult minds. So I guess he was talking to children before. Watching him in person for the first time that day, I realised that this was one man for whom there was no use even praying. He shamelessly committed public bla blasphemy against the Holy Spirit by telling an impressionable audience well under the spell of his hypnotic powers that the Holy Spirit was demanding they adopt Wicca, witchcraft, shamanism and goddess worship. Wow. Hundreds of well-dressed parish leaders and nuns listened to him in trance-like rapture. They appeared to adore Matthew Fox! Exclamation mark. One distinguished-looking CCD, uh, the, the um, Catholic sort of diocese teacher, proudly told me that he had taught St Thomas Aquinas at St Augustine for 30 years. That was, he said, a waste of time. I wish I'd been teaching Father Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox has many influential friends among the Protestants as well. One such, Claude Y. Stewart Jr. from Southeastern ba Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina, wrote the following in an article for a Matthew Fox Bear and Company publishing house. Quote, but the required theological reconstruction is proceeding in a number of quarters. Process theology represents one experiment in constructive re-envisionment. This is like woolly um, psychology language, common purpose stuff. Re-envisionment. Feminist theology, the theology of hope and liberation theology represent others. Several salutary tendencies characterised there
and other contemporary forms of theological experimentation with respect to God, the remedial results include a movement toward recognising genuine reciprocity between God and the world. This means that God is responsive love as well as, as creative love. Creation, humankind and other kind alike, really contribute something to the divine life. God perceives, appreciates, suffers with and enjoys that of which slash he is source and sponsor. Moreover, the new experiments in theology include a movement toward reconceptualising the character of the divine action within the world. The male conditioned model of coercion as the model as the mode of divine power is being supplanted. End quote. She continues We knew it anyway, but it was nice of Fox friend, the theologian Claude Y. Stewart, Junior, to tell us that process theology, liberation theology, feminist theology, etc., ad nauseum, were all part of the same ongoing process. And to think there are those who say the New Age movement is not in the church, exclamation mark. I've also found Matthew Fox's books in the Detroit Episcopalian Cathedral Bookstore. Episcopalian Cathedral Bookstore. I asked store personnel why, and they said... Bishop McGee just loves Matthew Fox. When I showed them blasphemous passages from the same books they were selling, I was met with bored shrugs. When I showed them to personnel in a local Methodist bookstore, the manager sympathetically said, I know dear, isn't it terrible, but it's all the young ministers want anymore. Matthew Fox and the New World Order. Sorry. Fox makes the call for the New World Order. As one reads his books dealing with that proposed political entity, biblical passages from Daniel and Revelation come to mind. Their perhaps imminent fulfilment appears possible as one reads in his Manifesto for a Global Civilization. Quote, Our error lure, lure, lures us to create the first global civilization on earth. We are that generation. We are that generation that begins the creative transformation out of the whole world into a single community, out of the diverse peoples of the planet. She continues, similarly, the prophesied apostasy of Second Thessalonians is brought to mind as one reads Fox's words, quote, specifically, the presumption that original sin is a valid starting point for spiritual living must be let go of. So he's um, so he's denying the concept of original sin. She continues, and in his planetary manifesto, showing clear signs of a very different Jesus with a different gospel and a different spirit. And that's from that's from a different publication. Matthew Fox, Manifesto for a Global Civilization. Oh, it's the same thing, sorry. I don't know. Not that anyone's bothered, but just for the sake of posterity. Galatians 6 9. Fox also commits that sin of sins. 
blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. He attributes his work of religious apostasy to the Holy Spirit. While Jesus said that the kingdom of God was among us, referring to himself, Fox says, quote, For while the good news is that the kingdom slash queendom of God has begun, the bad news is that it has not fully begun and is never fully incarnated, much less institutionalised, in any one form or expression of spirituality. The Holy Spirit will not be locked into any one form of religious faith. She continues, Daniel was told by the angel that such as do wickedly against the covenant will he corrupt by flatteries. Doing wickedly against God's covenant to deliver us through Jesus Christ, Matthew Fox perverts the gospel of redemption. In doing so, he sounds remarkably like the Ecumenical Institute's spirit, spirit declaration of the peoples of God, which is, quote, We, people of God, all the people of creation, need one another and all the wisdom we can derive from one another. Global interdependence requires a global ecumenical awakening so that the power and blessings of healing and compassion that all faiths can teach their people might ignite all peoples of the world in which we live. The ecumenical movement, understood as the energising of all faiths of this planet by celebration by interaction for justice and compassion, by dialogue and mutual study of one another's faiths, holds out for the human race one of its last great hopes for redemption. End quote. Is Fox correct? Question mark. Are these other faiths merely different manifestations of the work of the Holy Spirit? Do they hold out the promise of redemption for mankind? St Paul clearly said otherwise. Quote, what say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Question mark, end quote. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 10, 19-22, King James. Creation-centred spirituality. The book of Revelation gives a solemn warning, quote, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. As Revelation 14.7, King James, she continues. Evidently, Matthew Fox considers this to be a joke. His message is, is that we must worship the creation. The Apostle Paul told of those who, quote, changed the truth of God into a lie, unquote, end quote. He said they worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. Perhaps there is a direct causal relationship between those deliberate heresies by Matthew Fox 
and his professions of approval for homosexuality. Quote, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to, cor made to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonour their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a life, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Romans 1, 18-28, King James. Dot, dot, dot. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but, but have pleasure in them that do them. Excuse me. Romans 1, 32, King James. She continues. Creature worship. Creature worship is exactly what is implied by his centre's name, the Institute for the Centre of Creation Centred Spirituality. Matthew Fox is not content merely to deny the exclusive Christhood of Jesus, nor is it enough for him to deny the sole sovereignty of God. Matthew Fox has, as will be prophesied, uh, Matthew Fox has, as will the prophesied Antichrist, gone even further and has spoken incredible blasphemies against the God of gods. Daniel 11.36 Every time I take my finger out from the quote page, the references, another reference comes up. Then I leave my finger in and then there's no references. Murphy's Law. <clears throat> Matthew Fox openly advocates all forms of shamanism, witchcraft, neo-paganism and New Age philosophies. He does so openly that he has obtained public favour from self-confessed witches. The following infused review appeared in the official organ of Witchcraft Circles, the fall 1983 Circle Network News. Starhawk teaches at Holy Names. The Institute for Culture and Creation Centred Spirituality, headed by Matthew Fox, an open-minded open and open-hearted Dominican priest, is primarily devoted to transforming Christianity from a sin and redemption focus to one that sees God manifest in creation. As part of their commitment of feminism and ecumenicism, they have hired Starwork, Starhawk to teach courses in creating ritual, feminist theology, theology and sexuality, lifestyles and non-violence. This summer, she taught in a week-long programme held at Holy Names College in Oakland, Connecticut, and she's put, should be Oakland, CA, 
and in a second week-long programme co-sponsored by the Applewood Spiritual Centre in Toronto, Ontario. In the fall, she will be teaching in the regular semester at Holy Names. <clears throat> Stark Starhawk says, Teaching ritual and the history of goddess religion to priests, ministers, nuns and Christian educators was a new experience but deeply reward rewarding. I found the students very open to new ideas, hungry for new forms of ritual and very creative. We jumped the cauldron, danced the spiral and discovered new ways to heal and support each other. And then in italics, I am very glad to discover such a strong movement within Christian churches that is sympathetic to the pagan spirit and willing to learn from the teachings of the old religion, emphasis added. Starhawk also reports other breakthroughs in pagan public, public relations occurring among the Unitarians. In November, I participated in a witchcraft service organised by women of San Francisco's first Unitarian church. In March, I gave a series of four evening talks at the same church, culminating in a ritual. In April, I was asked to lead a service at Unitarian Church in Palos Verdes and to speak to a Unitarian discussion group in Long Beach. We do have friends out there. In addition, Luisa Teich, priestess of the Afro-Caribbean Luchumi voodoo traditions, will be teaching movement as meditation at Holy Names, and Ed Sevilla will teach, will teach ritual from the Native American traditions. For information about the programmes, write ICSS Holy Names College, 3500 Mountain Boulevard, Oakland, California, 94619, or call 415-436-0311. It's funny because the constant company, she keeps doing this, like, I mean, she's, it's like she's fighting against this, new age influence in the church and the things that she sees going on but she keeps putting out all the info like like really documenting all the info it's like if you want it if you're actually into this stuff you might just buy this book because then you could contact all these people in 1985 <sighs> circle network news described itself as quote a non-profit international pagan craft resource center headquartered at a farm and office near Madison, Wisconsin. Miriam Starhawk is one of the world's most politically active and important witches. She is a high priestess in a major coven and has been politically in both the witches slash neo-pagan movements as well as the feminist movement. She is a frequent speaker at New Age convocations and conferences. Support from Evangelicals Matthew Fox has hardly been subtle about either his heresies or his promotion of the New World Order. Notwithstanding, even professed, professed Evangelicals have promoted his conferences and sold his books. The December 1979 issue of Sojourners um, carried the following item in their seeds announcements resources and a line and signs of a new order column okay seeds announcements resources and signs of a new order that's like a column in the, in this magazine creation Creation-centred spirituality. Quote. The Institute for Creation-Centred Spirituality, ICCS, offers a nine-month master's degree program which integrates the spiritual and prophetic. The program offers opportunities for filmmaking, ceramics, photography and dance. A third term... Compassion Practicum enables students to participate in field work with the Eighth Day Centre for Justice. 
Hispanic Ministry, Friendship House, Women's Drop-In Centre, Amnesty International, Pax Christi and other groups committed to local and global justice. Global justice. The ecumenical interdisciplinary programme is directed by Matthew Fox, OP, and held at the Mundelein College in Chicago. Here she goes again. The programme runs from September 1980 to June 1981. For further information, write to Matthew Fox, OP, ICCS, Mundelein College, 6363 North Sheridan Road, Chicago, Illinois, blah, blah, blah. Bear and Company, accurately listed by David Spangler in his book Emergence as one of the country's most important New Age centres, has itself issued a rather dubious honour roll of those identifying with creation-centred theology. The list is shocking and clearly reveals the conscious collaboration between aspartates and the more open sectors of the New Age movement. Philip N. Joranson, Director of the Environment and Christian Creation Tradition Project of the Centre for Ethics and Spiritual Policy. Ken Butigan, Assistant Director, Centre for Ethics and Social Policy. Douglas G. Adams, Pacific School of Religion. Bernhard W. Anderson, Princeton Theological Seminary. Conrad Bonifazi, Humboldt State University, Ralph Wendell Burho, Meadville Theological School, John B. Cobb Jr., Claremont School of Theology, and author on, of Process Theology, Calvin B. DeWitt, University of Wisconsin, Madison, bracket, DeWitt is co-author of the Calvin College Fellows book, Earth Keeping. He also heads the supposedly evangelical O. Sable Institute, which may furnish interesting clues to links between Jeremy Rifkin and Matthew Fox. Andrew J. Duffner, Graduate Theological Union, Matthew Fox, Holy Lames College, or Oakland. Philip Hefner, Lutheran School of Theology, Chicago. Paul E. Lutz, University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Marjorie Casbia McCoy, author, actress, teacher. Charles S. McCoy, Graduate Theological Union, Berkeley, author of When Gods Change, Hope for Theology. Alan S. Miller, University of California, Berkeley. Ted F. Peters, Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary. Robert John Russell, Graduate Theological Union, Patricia L. Runo, Divinity School of the Pacific. G. Ledyard Stebbins, University of California, Davis. Claude, Claude Y. Stewart, Southeast Junior, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. Paul Wiegand, Graduate Franciscan Thule of School of Theology. Thule, let's slip of the tongue. Um... So, yeah, so it's clearly um, what she's getting at is this is like um, these are big movers and shakers in the church at the time. And they're kind of involved in pushing forward this um, theology, kind of like a council on foreign relations kind of thing going on in the church. Matthew Fox's ties to the New Age movement. Although Matthew Fox has denied knowledge of and participation in the New Age movement, the evidence is clearly to the contrary. Since making those denials to many in the Seattle area, he has since come out of the closet, that's in quotes, and proudly flown the New Age flag. David Spangler has publicly identified Matthew Fox as one of his best friends. Spangler is probably telling the truth, at least on this occasion. (laughs) 
And then Constance Cumbie, she's very, she's very, she's very dry. She comes out with these one-liners. She's very funny. He's probably telling the truth, at least on this occasion. When he said this at a North Carolina New Age seminar in the fall of 1984, he did not identify Fox personally by name, but he told a story he would not have known unless there was close personal contact with either Matthew Fox or myself. There was no such contact contact between Spangler or me, exclamation mark. Spangler either distorted the story or received it himself in a distorted manner. His listening audience consisted of many New Age leaders, including Donald Keyes, Patricia Misch and Patrick Healy, the current head of Amnesty International. Spangler spoke of a confrontation between his best friend and a woman. A confrontation somewhat similar to Spangler's description did occur between myself and Matthew Fox. It was on November the 30th, November the 10th, 1983 at Cobo Hall in downtown Detroit. Matthew Fox was speaking on behalf of the Archdiocese of Detroit Liturgy Committee. I was present, compliments of several local concerned Catholics who obtained a ticket for me under a pseudonym. The pseudonym was necessary because the year before, others had tried to register me from an earlier such conference, Spectrum 82. Those attempting the registration had used the name Constance Cumby on the application form. An alert registrar was aware of my opposition to Matthew Fox and the New Age movement. She returned the cheque, claiming the session was full. Registration under the pseudonym incurred no such problems, even though it took place at a much later time than the aborted effort of the, the year before. The week before this conference, Matthew Fox and I had both been featured speakers at Seattle University, is one she was talking about earlier, although we didn't meet there. Since the crowd at my talk exceeded his by approximately 10 to 1, yeah, yeah, you've already said that, Constance, I decided to gent gently needle him about it. I walked up to Matthew Fox at the next break and said to him, How are your crowds in Seattle? Oh, Constance getting a bit bitchy. He grinned affably and said, How did you know about Seattle? I replied, I was there. He grinned again and said, Oh, I, asked, I again asked him, How are your crowds? He then began to show a glimmer of suspicion that I was not a fox groupie and frowned, saying, oh, about a hundred or so. At that point, I said, <laughs> that's funny. Our information, there are about 50 and 10 of those were ours. As he looked thunderstruck. I extended my hand and said, Do permit me to introduce myself. My name is Constance Cumby. <laughs> he gasped and said, So you're Constance Cumby. Reminding him of his call to the Seattle broadcaster the week before, denying knowledge of the movement, I said, So you've never heard of the New Age movement? That's funny. There are paragraphs in We, We, We that sound amazingly similar to passages in Alice Bailey's The Reappearance of the Christ. <laughs> it's great. If... Ah. If this was happening now, she'd probably have a little camera and it would be on YouTube. She'd have it on her phone and you could watch this exchange going on. If it was happening in modern time. That's funny. There are passages in Wee 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 that sound amazingly similar to passages in Alice Bailey's The Reappearance of Christ. 
In stunned surprise, he gasped. I'll come talk to you later. I wanted his autograph on the pieces of heresy I'd collected of his and had delegated the job of obtaining them to a friend who Matthew Fox would not suspect. Well, why is she on his autograph? Was she doing some witchcraft or something? As I walked back to my table, she remained there with my books and did obtain his autographs. But before he signed the books, he turned to the woman coordinating the day's events and said, Oh no, you'll never guess who's here today. She asked who. Matthew Fox said, Constance Cumby. She said, Oh yes, I've heard immediately and we'll have written questions only. The lack of public taping did not prevent my obtaining one for the day's proceedings. Another disapproving Christian present, present tapped the tape to the session. At the next break, Matthew Fox surprised me by finding my table with ease out of several hundred large tables in the hall. He walked up to me with my friend and I, the only ones at the table, and said, Well, well, Constance Cumby, tell me. I know all about the things you hate, David Spangler, the New Age movement. Tell me, what do you love? I said to him, well, as long as you're on the list of things I hate, I hate anti-Semitism too. Looking startled, he called out, good, so do I. He started to walk away. I called out after him while he was still within earshot. Not if you're involved in the New Age mo movement, you don't. I thought little about the incident until I received telephone calls from North Carolina after the Asheville site conference in November 84. David Spangler addressed this crowd of New Age elite and the major concern of the conference appeared to be the backlash that had developed to their work. Donald Keyes had already warned of the backlash and said... You know books have already been written about us. There's that book, Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. Then David Spangler spoke. He told the audience that his best friend had been in a public debate with this woman. It was not a public debate. And that during the course of the debate, his best friend said to her, Well, tell us, we know all about the things you hate, David Spangler, the New Age movement. Tell us what you love. Spangler said that the woman refused to continue the debate and angrily stomped, stomped off. So she's, she's, um, she's basically been putting two and two together, trying to prove that this David Spangler and Matthew Fox are best friends. Which was, maybe that was a... Um, they were kind of trying to keep it quiet at the time. Despite the inaccuracies in Spangler's account, there was more significance to the story than the, than the North Carolina observers realised. One woman approached him during the recess and said, That woman you were talking about, was that by any chance Constance Cumby? David Spangler said, Oh yes it was. The observer he spoke with called to tell me of the incident and to say she was sending tapes of the event which she did but she and the other Christian observers did not know of the true significance of the event until they spoke with me there was no way David Spangler could have known of this private incident unless he and Fox really were close friends Fox has since admitted his closed French closed friendship to Spangler, close friendship I think she means, to several people who have contacted me. Fox's Seattle speaking engagement was co-sponsored by the Chinook Learning Community. That organisation is headed by Fritz and Vivienne Hull. It works extremely closely with the Findehorn Foundation and David Spangler is a close personal friend of the Hulls. 
David Spangler's book, Emergence, labels Fox's publishing company, Bear and Company Inc., one of the country's most important New Age centres. He does likewise with the South Whidbey Island in the Seattle area, Chinook Learning Community Island. Interestingly, when Fox called the Seattle radio talk show host about the New Age movement, he said he had neither heard of it nor was part of it. He forgot to mention his brand new book, Original Blessing. There, he had displayed much knowledge of that movement. On page 314, he included New Age mystics such as David Spangler, Jean Houston, Marilyn Ferguson. David Spangler's own Laurian Association has long listed Matthew Fox's books in their catalogue. Second Thessalonians clearly told us we would not know the Antichrist's identity until the restrainer was taken out of the way. However, Revelations 13 just as clearly said it was okay to guess. It may be sheer coincidence and it must be remembered. Matthew, Matthew Fox, is an assumed name. But no matter what one does to Matthew Fox's names using either the occult system of numerology or the Greek Greek Hebrew system or mixing them up using his first name his last name or his nickname Matthew Fox adds up to a perfect 666 on his Winston Press 1979 book a spiritual a spirituality named compassion and the healing of the global village the name FOX ominously hangs across a starlit sky with a glowing planetary globe being substituted for the O. To one familiar with New Age symbolism, this re represents an occult goal of making Earth a sacred planet. The words FOX are many times bigger than the title. One friend said to me, you would swear it was a book by somebody named Compassion about somebody named Fox. The word Fox in occult and Greek slash Hebrew numerology also ominously formed a 666 against a starry backdrop. With Fox's public advocacy of homosexuality, it is clear that he has no regard for the desire of women. It may all be just too coincidental but Matthew Fox should be watched. He is saying the right things. He is associating with the right people. And his name adds up to the right number. Whether he is or is not, however, his net effect is just as deleterious. If people buy the perverted gospel of Matthew Fox, their souls will be just as eternally lost as if they take the mark of the beast from the actual Antichrist. That's the end of chapter 14. And thank God it wasn't full of awful, woolly Matthew folks quotes.